What's going on guys, Shawnee Dogs here, and if you're just here for the video title, feel free to skip ahead to the timestamp. But I just want to talk to all of you subscribers for a minute. I read the comments on the last video, like literally every single comment. It was my first video in over a year, and I just want to say thank you. I'm not good when it comes to conveying emotion, but I'm very proud of the community that we've built here, and I want it to continue to grow. It was extremely hard to leave YouTube but it's even harder to come back. And it just felt so good reading all of the comments. Like, I still remember a lot of your names. Some of you even have the same profile pictures from all these years ago back on Infinite Warfare. And I was actually gonna include an unlisted video in the description of that last video that I made where I was gonna talk about like, you know, why I was gone so long. I was gonna explain everything, but I, I just couldn't bring myself to make the video. I don't know, for me it's just really awkward when it comes to personal details, even like even close friends. I don't really tell them much when it comes to personal details about my life. So I just didn't really feel comfortable making that video. So I just wanted to fill you guys in on that. And I also released a poll yesterday where I asked you guys, which game do you want me to make content on? And I just put Infinite Warfare there. I knew that I was gonna get some votes, but I was mainly just seeing what would win out between Black Ops Cold War and Warzone. I assumed it would kind of be split because everyone's still crazy over Warzone. That's like the main game all the big streamers are playing. So I think I'm mainly going to end up making Cold War content. I may throw in a couple Infinite Warfare videos from time to time because you guys seem to love them. But let's get into this video. This is also one that I've wanted to make for a long time because I'm an actual gamer. I'm not just going to sit there for an hour a day. No, like I put in hours. And the one thing that bugs me more than bad game design is bad controller design because when you put in all of these hours, your controllers will start to degrade. There's no getting around it. And I'm not only gonna talk about scuff in this video, they're just in the title because they're the worst offenders. For years now, I've been looking for the best controller out there when it comes to what's gonna last the longest with the least amount of issues, and then the price to value ratio, because at the end of the day, those are the things that are most important. So what I value in a controller might be different from what you value for me, I need to have a controller that has four paddles because that is the optimal setup. Yeah, you can play claw and it'll work just fine. There's some pro cod players that still play claw. However, I'm sure they're also going to have arthritis in their forties or fifties. They're just not worried about that because they can worry about that later. They're trying to make their money now while they're pro players. But if you're not a pro player and you don't want arthritis, but you still want to be able to press all of the face buttons on your controller at the same time, you want to get a controller with paddles. The one other thing that I'm going to note is that when it comes to the PlayStation controller design, I'm not really too big on it. Like, I feel like the controller is a little bit too small and it doesn't feel comfortable in my hands. That's why I prefer the Xbox controller. And I actually even use my Xbox controller on my PlayStation. I had to get an adapter for that, but it works just fine. And that's the solution that I found because I'd rather use the Xbox controller. Like it's not gonna make me play better. It just feels more comfortable in my hands. So what I'm gonna show you now are what I found to be the best three options when it comes to controllers, when you're factoring in the criteria that I mentioned. One of them is a high-end, more expensive controller. One of them is a low-end, very cheap controller. And the other one is a scuff controller. I wish I had something positive to say about this controller, but I really don't. Now the absolute worst thing about this scuff controller and why I really don't think you should buy one is the quality control on this is almost non-existent. Anyone that I've known that has owned a scuff, they said it lasts three to six months. No one has ever gone over the year mark on a scuff that I've talked to. My controller lasted four months. And the first thing that gave out were the paddles, which defeats the purpose of paying extra money versus getting a regular controller. The X paddle, which is one that in Call of Duty you only use to reload, and I only really use this to play Call of Duty, that paddle stopped working. It would still make the clicking noise, but it wasn't actually pressing the button. And that's a huge issue because I'm mainly using the A and B paddle, I'm referring to Xbox controls by the way, to jump and slide. You're literally only using X to pick up guns, pick up ammo, and to reload. A and B are used a lot more. Somehow the X paddle stopped working. That happened after about three months of use. Then within a month after that, and I was still using the controller, when I went to sprint, it wouldn't work like half the time clicking the left stick in, or it would 
like start the sprint and then it would make me like walk slower than normal walking speed there was something really wrong with the left stick so that's not even including the cosmetic issues of this controller which i'm gonna get into but just on a performance basis this controller cost me 200 dollars and it lasted me four months before the paddle that i was using for x which was the top right one and the left stick basically just stopped working that's unacceptable now when we get into the quality of the product for what you're paying for it gets even worse i'm going to show here i'm not going to stick the controller too close into the camera because it'll get it'll get a little too bright it gets like overexposed so you can see right here the face buttons on the controller which i almost never use because i'm pretty much only using the paddles i may only use these to like go through menus or if I don't want to degrade the paddle, it, it accounts for less than 10% of the time that I'm actually pressing a button. I usually press the paddle. And you can see the paint literally chips off of the buttons. Even this, which I only use, like, I don't know if it's called the D-pad on a PlayStation controller, but the D-pad on Xbox, which I only use to call in score streaks, even on the up and left arrows, it's starting to chip. You can't really see it that well, but you can start to see the white outline on the outside of the buttons. That's ridiculous. And it's not like I'm some sort of pig or I don't take care of my electronics or like I'm eating at my desk. I literally never do that. No other controller that I've ever had has had the sort of issues that my scuff had. Then we get to the back of the controller and this is where it goes to a whole new level. What even is this? So this is the militarized grip. The back of the controller is white, although it's not anymore. And you can see on the actual normal part of the controller there's nothing wrong with it it maintains the color but whatever they used on this militarized grip it it has to be like absorbing the oils in your skin i don't know i don't know the chemistry behind this but it literally turns brown and there's nothing that gets it out i i tried everything this happened within two weeks of me using the controller I've actually kept this around as a backup controller just in case. I still haven't used it since the left stick stopped working and I bought this in 2017. So I bought it a long time ago, but it saw less than six months of use. And I actually tried to remake this exact same controller on the Scuf website and they still have everything that it has and it came out to the same exact price. I think it was $201 and however many cents. But the one thing I thought that was funny is this militarized grip they still offer it adds an extra like 16 dollars to the price and they only offer it in black now because i'm sure there were an infinite number of complaints about this white militarized grip just turning brown doesn't matter how good you take care of your controllers it's going to happen and before you guys hit me with the hey this isn't a base controller you paid extra money for this even the base one this is the scuff impact it's supposed to feel more like an Xbox controller, like it's a little bit bigger. It works on PS4 and PS5, I think. Even the base version of the controller still costs $161.99. So this controller only lasted me four months. That is $40 a month at the low end. And for what I paid, it's $50 a month. If someone told you that you were going to pay $50 a month for a controller, you wouldn't get that controller. It's honestly sad because before the controller has these issues, it works fine. It's just, it's only gonna be like that for so long, which makes it a terrible buy if you're looking at how long it's gonna last. So now the issue here is if someone at Scuff sees this, they're either going to try to take the video down because it's like defamation, I don't know, they could try to argue something, or they could do what I've seen in other videos where someone reviews a Scuff controller and it's a really, really bad review. And I've seen a lot of them because the scuff controller just doesn't last that long and it's not really worth it for the price. And then they come out with another review where scuff sends them a new controller and they're reviewing that new controller. But then at that point, it's like, you don't know if that controller is on the same quality standard as all of their other controllers. This could be one that they made sure was in a good batch that cost more money to produce. Like there's all sorts of things they could have done. They're sending you an exact controller to review and i'm trying not to name who it is because like i'm not trying to attack someone but there was one reviewer that i saw that gave a really negative review in the next video he they gave him a new controller and he gave it a really good review because the controller actually worked and it didn't break down the problem with that is you don't know what's happening behind the scenes you don't know if they gave him the best controller they've ever made you don't know if they paid him thousands of dollars to just 
edit the review and say that scuff is really good you'll never know so if you ever see my opinion change i was probably paid off but as of right now i don't see any reason why any rationally thinking human being should buy a scuff controller you are literally throwing money out the window so now we look at what i consider the second best option and that is the power a fusion you've probably never heard of them because i actually never heard of them before i got the controller the reason I got it is because it looked like an Elite controller, and it was $80. $80 is not really that much more expensive than a regular controller. This one has all four paddles, so it's literally everything that I want in a controller. I don't really care about the customization. As long as it has four paddles and it's going to function, then it's a good controller. And although it was a million times better than my scuff controller when it comes to the cosmetic side of things, you don't see any horrible discolorations or paint chipping it's it mainly just feels like a regular xbox controller and i don't know how this happened but i ordered one controller and uh they somehow sent me three of them so i got three controllers for 80 dollars. i'm not complaining i didn't go ahead and tell them and that's i'm not gonna factor that in like i'm still gonna consider one controller as 80 dollars, not three of them and i got this controller in september the problem it's the same as the scuff controller. After about four months of use, one of the paddles starts to give out. In one of the controllers, the A paddle started to give out, which is what I use more than anything. One of them, that same X paddle that I use on my scuff controller gave out. By the way, I have on my left hand, I use A and B. On the right, I use X and Y. So just so you know where the paddles are on the controller, which ones are malfunctioning for me. So on one controller, the A paddle stopped working. On one, the X paddle stopped working, and the third one is still going strong. So the issue here is, again, it just stops functioning the way that you bought the controller. You bought it for the paddles, and they just don't work anymore. That took around four months. It cost $80. However, that is much, much better than the scuff. That brings it to around $20 a month if you decide to break it down that way. But even when you look at it like that, that still seems like a lot of money. Now, if you're a casual gamer and you're putting in like two hours a day at most, on average 14 hours a week, this controller will last you over a year. Like I'm probably putting in minimum eight hours a day on this controller. So like these are going to break down. It's just a matter of when. But for a casual gamer, this will probably last around a year, which is also I would say the same for a scuff. But I mean, if you're getting a scuff controller, you're probably not a casual gamer. But this costs about half of what a scuff costs, and it accomplishes the same thing. So that's why I think this is a much better buy. If I ever find a cheaper controller that continues to work well after four months, and there aren't major malfunctions, whether it's stick drift or the paddles stop working or the bumpers don't work anymore, the triggers, whatever the case may be, if I find one, I will let you guys know. But as of right now, the winner in this battle is the elite controller now this controller has seen better days i've had this controller since i believe 2016 and it is still going strong the only thing i can't use it for now because i've had it so long is when i go to double sprint which like you need if you're going to play warzone sometimes it, it, it doesn't always work when you click in the left stick and that only happened after over three years of owning it but that wasn't really a huge issue if i go to play any other game I can use the controller just fine but this has outlasted every other controller that i have ever gotten you'll notice something the left stick has no rubber on it this is the elite series one you can also see the rubber grip is completely coming off there's two of these on the back of each side this is the only one left that's the main issue with this controller something people were complaining about the grips fall off but the controller continues to work I'm not really worried about what it looks like if the grips are falling off. If you could still use the paddles and there's no other issue with the controller, I'm still going to use it. The main reason why this is the best controller I've ever owned is all four of the paddles still work to this day. They still work. They still click. I'll, I'll click them for you. I forgot using this controller. The clicks aren't very loud, but they still work. All four of them. And the only issue that I ran into is what I said earlier that... Sometimes when I click the stick, it doesn't register the press, but it's not really that often. It was just annoying enough in Warzone that I ended up trying new controllers, seeing if something was better. But when I go to buy another controller, it's probably going to be an Elite Series 1. 
because it costs $150, I believe. That's what I bought it for. And it lasted three years before it saw any issues, and it was still more usable than my scuff controller and this Power A Fusion controller that I have because all the paddles continued to work. I just need you guys to think about this, that I used a controller so long that the rubber on the left stick literally disintegrated. Like, it tore into like three pieces one day after slowly being worn down day after day. That's how good this controller is. Now, I'm not sponsored by Scuff, Power A, or Microsoft. I don't think Microsoft really sponsors people, but the other two probably do. But who would have thought the first party controller is actually the best one? Because if you break it down, this controller cost me $50 a year. The Scuff controller cost me $50 a month. There's no comparison. Unfortunately, when it comes to quality control, you can never be sure. Like, while this may have lasted me forever, and my scuff and my Power A stopped working after four months, that might not be the case for you. Or it could be the case where I said before, if you're a casual gamer and you're only putting in a couple hours every day, you're not even gonna experience these problems for years of gaming. So don't take this as the end all be all. It's mostly anecdotal based off of one or two controllers of specific brands that I owned. I can't go out there and buy every single controller, buy like 20 controllers of each brand and test them all out. That's just not feasible. But as of right now, I don't see any reason to buy any controller other than an Elite Series 1. That's what I'm going to continue to do. And I'm just giving my opinion because I want Scuff and other companies like them to do better. The main issue with Scuff, it has nothing to do with using the controller because when it works, it works great and it's a customizable controller it looks cool if it functioned as intended it would be the perfect controller it wouldn't matter how much it costs if it lasts the problem is it doesn't last so because it's so expensive you're basically just wasting your money it's going to break down in the same four to six months as every other controller even this controller even though it lasted me three years you're still going to get a little bit of stick drift every controller gets that and i don't know how this happens but for a lot of my friends their bumpers are actually the first thing that stops working on their controllers. And when I play COD, I shoot with my bumpers. So like I'm pressing both of them, like the left bumper to aim, the right bumper to shoot. I'm pressing both of those like thousands of times a day. And I've never had those stop working on me. I think it could have something, something to do with the way I hold the controller that I literally hold it like this the whole time. So like what's pressing my left and right bumper is like before even this first knuckle on my finger so it might be that i'm pressing like the edge of the bumper and i'm not really putting that much pressure but i'm sharing all this with you guys so you can make the best decision for yourself because obviously not everyone plays the same way not everyone plays the same games holds the controller the same way likes the same type of controller there's a lot that goes into this but for me right now if i'm looking in terms of price to performance like how long the controller is going to last me and function at 100%. Nothing compares to the Elite controller. The Power A Fusion's in second place just because it's the cheapest controller with four functioning paddles I could find. And then there's everything else. So I'm curious to hear what you guys have to say. If you know of any controllers that are better, feel free to post them. Let us all know. I might even pin one if I find a good one that I hadn't known before. Because like you, I'm just trying to find the best controller out there while not breaking the bank. So if you enjoyed the video, please be sure to drop a like Comment down below with any thoughts or questions you may have. And as always, subscribe to the channel if you guys are brand new for some Call of Duty content. That's what's going to be in the next video. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.